Hello one and all to another Kerbal Space Program Adventure this wonderful Saturday. Thank you for coming and you know good to, good to see you all here. This week we'll see the construction of Laun Aerospace's first extraterrestrial surface base and what better place to build a space outpost than on the surface of the Mun. Some of you may already be familiar with the various rockets and indeed be familiar with the uh, the final product of this mission as I designed and built all of the base modules and their respective lifters in live stream on Wednesday night. And now you have the opportunity to watch all those little cogs and pieces come together and form what I hope to be a fairly entertaining package. The mission will consist of four launches into LKO, um, delivering of payloads, which will result in the full construction of the base in LKO. The whole thing will then fly itself to Mun as one big monolithic structure and proceed to land itself. And the over I'm doing it this way because the overwhelming vote on the live stream was to see this done in multiple launches rather than one launch. So that's that's why I'm doing it this way. In fact. The basic shape of this base, uh, the location of the base, and the way it's assembled and transported to the Mun is extremely reminiscent of my previous Mun colony video I made. Let's see now, uh, all the way back in the ancient times of uh, 2016. Now I still get routinely asked uh, about the various aspects of that video and whatnot, so I thought that it would be a, a good opportunity to do a soft recreation of that mission since my videos are no longer primarily 4 minute music videos but much longer commentary based affairs. So this kind of not only gives me uh, not only gives me the chance to uh, show off more footage of the mission itself, but also gives me the chance to talk a little bit more about what it is I'm doing and the logic and reasoning behind each move and decision. So, uh, what am I doing right now? Well, um, I'm launching, <coughs> we've launched the base core into low curb in orbit, and this, you know, is by far the heaviest payload, hence why it necessitated that enormous lifting booster. It's large not only because it's the largest base module, but it also contains all the fuel reserves and engines required to haul the structure from low curb in orbit across space to the surface of the Mun. I picked fairly powerful engines with ample gimbal in order to help keep the ship under control during the moving process, as the center of mass isn't particularly well placed. This was this is kind of combated by the uh, the aforementioned reasons, coupled with the fact that I spread the engines out to cover a relatively large area, uh, just to help negate the issue of the center of mass not quite being in the physical center of the base. Anyway, um, well, actually that's a uh, I guess that's all the beats I wanted to hit, really. Uh, the eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that all orbital parts that don't end up as part of the base itself are fitted with batteries and probe cores and engines so that they can be deorbited and keep LKO free from junk, although you may see sometimes on the map screen there are debris there, even though they're on a sub-orbital trajectory, I think the game just sort of glitches out a bit, so you're going to have to do a switch to those to get those to deorbit properly. Um, but yeah, that's the only other thing I feel like I need to mention, uh, and it probably didn't even need saying because... You can see it by uh, watching the video. Um, you know, I feel like most of this footage is going to be fairly self-explanatory. So with all that said and done, I guess I can just ramble about any old thing. And what better thing to ramble about than to head down the black bottomless hole that is story time with Matt. It's a long time coming. It gets requests a lot. So let's do this. The year is 2013, I think. Either 2013 or 2014. In fact, actually... It's more likely to be 2014. Okay, um, just, just cut that bit out. The year is 2014, probably. I am a second year student at the University of Sheffield, studying eyes. I lived in a house of five people, three engineers, me, and a guy doing maths, informatics, and accounting, I think. I, I never really could remember the name of his course, but whatever. He was away for the duration of this timeline, so, you know, for this story, he's not important. <laughs> so the engineers were out on an engineering social, like, you know, a pub crawl. And uh, I had exams coming up, so I had to stay in and do some work. Now, the social they were going on was a fancy dress social too. I believe the theme, <coughs> although I never actually quite found out, was uh, science fiction or space or something, as they were all getting dressed up in green face paint and alien costumes. And by alien costumes, I mean green t-shirts from Primark, green face paint on their faces and arms, and green leggings. And, you know, white trainers. <laughs> I helped out a little bit with the application of the face paint because apparently I, for one, wasn't the, I wasn't drinking. And also because I apparently had a pedigree in putting things near eyes. So, uh, you know, it was deemed that I should be the one who applied the makeup. A task I was a bit apprehensive about first because it's a big undertaking, but I think I pretty much nailed it. 
Uh, so yeah, I applied the makeup and things. Anyway, we're getting a bit derailed here. Let's let's continue. I chilled out in the living room uh, with them during pre-drinks, which for those of you that don't know what pre-drinks are, it's like a session at home in which participants drink heavily before going out to drink heavily. It's a money-saving tactic so that you don't need to spend quite as much money on expensive drinks at bars to get a good level of drunkness. But, you know, I wasn't drinking, so I was just enjoying the cool, refreshing taste of Pepsi. Pepsi. So the time is now somewhere between 10pm uh, and 11pm and the taxi arrives and my friends get in to depart, these friends being Ollie, Josh and Adrian. Uh, they're all featured in my football golf vlog <laughs> if you need a means to uh, put a face to their names. So yeah, they set up on their merry way. I chuck some of the empty cans and bottles into the recycling door, heading upstairs to crack on with some work. I believe at the time I was writing an assignment on the ocular risks relating to rhabdomyosarcoma and yeah. It's a real page turner, let me tell you. <laughs> so I work on that for a good few hours. I always, I always work best later on in the evenings, so I'm a bit of a night owl, so I got a lot done. And, you know, then I chilled out on some Steam games. I knew there'd be a ruckus when the others got back, so there wasn't much point in trying, go, trying to go to bed. So um, I hear a crashing sound at the front door, followed by some cheering. So I look over my shoulder at my Sony-branded C205A Silver Edition bedside alarm clock and digital radio, and see that the time is now just gone 3am, so I conclude that Josh, Ollie and Adrian have made it back, safely <laughs> safely returned from their night out, so I go down to bid them welcome. And, you know, I see Ollie and Josh chilled out on the sofa eating some toast, and I ask them, you know, where's Adrian? And they kind of looked at me inquisitively, with a slight drunken confusion in, confusion in their eyes. Most of the face paint cracked and faded at this point in the evening, and they reply in a somewhat slurred voice, Isn't he home already? He left us a while ago. I'm saying this quite coherently now, but uh, it was a lot more incomprehensible at the time, I can tell you. Oh no, I think. I look over towards Adrian's door, and it's still open with no signs of life in there, and I certainly didn't hear anyone else enter, so I replied, you know, with slight worried inflection in my words, um, No, he, he, he's not come back. So, we all find this very funny, <laughs> before we all realise that we should probably uh, ensure he's okay. So, you know, uh, so check it. I grab my phone, I punch in Adrian's number. Actually, I, I, I tapped the contacts button, scrolled down to the A section, which wasn't very far, and tapped the name Adrian. But, you know, saying that I punched in the number, you know, it sounds way cooler than dramatic from a video standpoint. So check it. I grab my phone, I punch in Adrian's number, and it rings for a bit. Then I hear an answer. It's it's muffled at first. You can kind of hear like a, a shearing of car tires on wet ground and a sort of ambient rain pouring sound. So I guessed he was outdoors and near a road somewhere. I know, steady on, Sherlock. And I say, Adrian, you there? I kind of hear this sort of muffled sound, like a, <laughs> you know, wind roaring against the microphone, followed by a, Ollie? So I say, no, it's Matt. <laughs> where are you? And I hear a pause. I don't know. You, you don't know? No. Well, what, what can you see around you? You know, it sounds like you're outside, right? Are there, are there any buildings nearby? What can you see? Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm by the train station. Right, so let me just add here a general layout of where we lived. I lived in a shit... Uh, <laughs> nearly said a bad word there, don't, don't demonetize me, please. I lived in a city called Sheffield, um, or that place where Arctic monkeys come from, and we lived in an area called Crooks. Now, in terms of general geographical locations, Crooks sits on the west side of the city, then you have the city centre, which, you know, is the centre of the city, and then you have the train station, which is on the far east of the city. Obviously the night out, um, you know, that took place in the city centre, so dear old Adrian managed to do two things. First, he left the bar slash club they were at, didn't get in a taxi home like a normal person might, and proceeded to walk in what is basically the exact opposite direction of our house. You know, so, uh, so I say, you're by the train station. You're, like, you're sure? Yeah. Well, at the least, like, at least, since you're by a station, there's gonna be lots of taxis around, right? So you can just get one of those. Ma, ma. Yeah? I, I don't know, I don't have my wallet. What? I don't have my wallet. No, 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 like, I, I heard you, but, like, what, did you lose it? No, I gave it to Ollie to keep it safe. So I glance up in... Uh, Ollie, who at this exact moment is literally just holding out a battered wallet in his hand and says, Huh, oh, I remember Adrian gave me his wallet now. So I'm like, oh, brilliant. So <laughs> he's stranded in the pouring rain on the other side of Sheffield at 3am in the morning, drunk, dressed as a bloody alien, and <laughs> there's no money to pay for a taxi. So I turn back to my phone and say, okay, Adrian, here's the situation. We have your wallet. Just flag a cab down and explain to him that you don't have your wallet but that I'll meet you outside the house and then we'll pay him then. So Adrian says okay and hangs up. 
I don't know why he hung up. He probably should have left the phone on, but whatever. A couple of minutes go by, and then he phones back. Adrian. Ma, ma. No, 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 no taxi will take me. Adrian. Okay, but I I've been thinking about this, you know, whilst we've been in the, in the break between our conversations. Why on earth did you give Ollie your wallet? Like, to keep it safe? Yeah, it was to keep it safe. But, but how does that even work? You, all in you know what? Actually, I don't care. Just, <laughs> just, call, just call a taxi. Uh, give them your phone. Give your phone, and I'll talk to the driver if they're not taking you. Okay, okay. He then, uh, he then proceeded to hang up the phone again, and I'm like, for God's sakes. <laughs> I immediately phoned him back saying, Adrian, you should probably keep me on the line, right? So you can pass the phone over with me already here, yeah? So we agree. <laughs> a few more minutes go by. I can hear stomping and splashing around and cars driving as he uh, sounds like he st stumbles around trying to flag down another cab. And then I hear, like, the sound of an engine approaching and rumbling and the sound of one pulling up and the sound of an electric window rolling down. And then... I hear another voice on the phone of someone that sounds like a taxi driver. Well, I don't know what a taxi driver sounds like, but it's clearly a third party has entered the conversation. Uh, but given that I didn't hear Adrian saying anything at first, I imagine the scene went something on the lines of uh, Adrian flagging down a cab, getting the driver to wind down his window, and then immediately just thrusting the phone at him. So, you know, I, I say who I am and explain the situation kind of, and that I'm here to help you get my friend home, and then I'll meet you at the house with cash to pay. What do you say, partner? The driver then said that my friend is too drunk and that he won't take him. Yeah. Damn. Well, you know, you got to take some hits, haven't you? So, you know, fast forward a few more minutes and we try another car and, you know, what do you know? This one works. The driver understands. A contract is agreed upon. Adrian gets in and hangs up. So I, I guess it all worked. The time is now about 3.30ish in the morning. I kind of want to go to bed. Uh, so I'm just hanging and, you know... We all, we all found this very funny at <laughs> the time. I hear my phone go and it's Adrian saying that they're near to the house. And, you know, I'm actually impressed that him in his current state, he was observant enough to know which street they were, they were on and, you know, had the foresight to phone me up. So I head out into the street and, you know, it's deserted. So I think, oh, maybe Adrian was mistaken. But then, but then hark, I hear on yonder way the distinctive sound of a black cab rumbling its way up the hill. So I step into the road and look down and there it is. I grab a tenner from my pocket and the car pulls up and I hand it to the driver and I thank him for being so accommodating and all that and blah blah blah. I then turn to the back of the cab and open the door and there was Adrian, makeup running down his face, clothes sodden. He looked a bit like the Joker uh, in the interrogation scene you know, with <laughs> where the, where the makeup starting to crack a little bit. And you know, it, it's, it's like a scene, his eyes, his eyes lit up. I like to think this was akin to, uh, to Moses meeting God because, you know, I have an insane ego complex like that. And he just said, Matt, Matt, I just like leapt out of the cab into my arms. <laughs> I was like reuniting with my son. <laughs> so I carry him inside and send him on his way to bed. And that was that. Unfortunately, I, I seem to be the only one that really remembers the whole story out of this. I guess, you know, alcohol does that for you. But, uh, I thought it was a funny, a funny tale, and I guess, I guess that's it, I guess that's the end, and I guess we are pretty close to the end of this mission now, to be honest. So yeah, we, <clears throat> so yeah, we have touched down on the Mun successfully, and we have these sort of side boosters here, obviously, look a bit naff, they stayed attached, so we can just dump them off, and then we can use the onboard probe cores and SAS wheels to just fly them off into the sunset and crash them down and destroy them, so our our base looks, you know, like, better. <laughs> and uh, yes, I guess with that, there's a little uh, shot of the whole base in its final form. We can do some sort of quick pans around with the camera, but I don't think this video needs to go on any longer than it needs to, to be honest, so I hope, I very much hope that you enjoyed watching this. If you want to see more, obviously, click on the old like and subscribe button. I it feels, it feels a bit cheesy saying it, but it does help channels, so I guess I should. <laughs> and uh, yeah, links to Patreon, Twitter, and Discord all in the description. There are some links on screen as well. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.